What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So today I'm gonna to probably ruffle a, a few feathers because I'm gonna show you today how volume and trading volume is actually killing your gains. And you've probably heard exactly the opposite. You've heard that, hey, more trading volume is the key. Volume is what drives hypertrophy. But I will tell you this, I know there's gonna be a lot of strength coaches, trainers, and even longtime trainees who are gonna say, thank you Jeff for finally making this video because a lot of people who are in this industry will realize that volume and the focus on volume is the 2019 version of functional training, right? The obsession to run in balance with one leg on a BOSU ball and lift a weight in the other hand didn't really lead to a lot of carryover to anything functional, right? It was a buzzword, it was overused. And the same thing's happening here. Volume is not, in isolation, going to be that important because what you need to do at all times is consider it in context along with intensity. And we're gonna talk about this because there's a few scenarios here. What we do is people say, well, God, I hear that. It, it, it actually, if volume is the driver, we know these are linked, intensity could actually come down. I could trade in some intensity for volume and get the same results and really get uh, and drive hypertrophy. And that's what has me shaking my head because there's a reason why people have adopted this. It's easier, right? Anybody can add more volume in the gym without necessarily having to add more intensity because intensity should read to you as effort. And effort is irreplaceable. Effort is linked to this training volume. This volume becomes significant when effort and intensity is considered as well. And because they're linked, there is this set up here much like supply and demand and the concept of supply and demand that as volume gets high training intensity needs to come down in order to allow you to recover in between sessions and the same thing if the intensity were to get high your volume would come down in order to allow you to get back in the gym again for the next session the next session but what happens in specific instances well the, the newbie hears about this and they run to the gym and they're probably doing a bro split, and, and I've actually pointed out before, it's not necessarily that you can't actually do any good out of a bro split. You can if you know how to do it in a smarter way, but let's say in a suboptimal way, they do a, a bro split, and they head to the gym doing chest, and they add what used to be 10 sets for chest or 12 sets for chest, they're now doing 20 or 24 sets for chest, right? At the expense of what? Intensity. Because I don't care who you are, if you're a natural lifter, as you start to add that kind of volume, something's going to suffer. The quality of the sets that you're doing are going to go down over the course of that workout. What might have been even good in the first two, three, five, six sets is not going to look the same way when you get towards set 16, 18, 20, 22. And much like the concept I covered here before in three sets of 12 is killing your gains, where we break down the quality of an individual set, if we are basically holding back in order to hit a number, the volume number of 20 or 24 in that example, and we're holding back the quality of what we do down here, we are wasting our time in the gym, guys. I promise you that. It's a waste of time. The irony is that research shows that you really don't need that many quality sets to create muscle protein synthesis, right? The spark for muscle hypertrophy. You don't. You need somewhere between four to 10 sets of high quality work. But high quality has nothing to do with volume. The quality is driven by the intensity. So let's say somebody with more training experience says, look, I'm not, I'm not doing bro splits anymore. I've been told to go do uh, total body training three times a week or two times a week or whatever the scenario might be, push, pull legs. I've, I've split it up differently. Well, they, they realize that I don't have to put this all on one day. They realize that volume is not necessarily looked at in a, in a micro cycle of a day, but it's, it's extrapolated over the course of at least a week, but multiple weeks. So I can get my volume in over time. So what they'll do is they'll split this up. They'll hit their volume across multiple days. So what might be a total of 20 or 24 sets or whatever of, of a specific target, whatever you're trying to target here, just using the same total here as an example, they would break down into let's say seven, seven, and seven or even five, five, and five at a little bit of a lower end. Realizing that they can kind of re-hit this, this muscle protein synthesis goal multiple times per week. With the idea being, if I can only hit a muscle once a week in a bro split, that's 52 opportunities to create protein synthesis. Whereas I could do it twice a week 
and get 104 opportunities or even three times a week. The problem, once again, though, is they're told in order to do this, you've got to make sure. You better watch out about on that intensity of your training because, God forbid, if you train to failure, you're going to interrupt your body's ability to recover 48 hours later. You're going to create too much damage. You're going to create too many problems. So what happens is they hold back in the number of repetitions they perform as we approach failure. They stay below failure. And beyond that, you have to ask yourself the honest question, and this is why I'm making this video, to make yourself ask these questions of yourself, and that is, are you really even training to true, momentary, concentric failure? Meaning, I cannot even lift this thing any bit more. I go all the way as hard as I can until I can't lift it anymore. Is that actually happening, or are you stopping just because it's getting difficult? And believe me, I've done it myself. A second's difficult, I kind of stop, it's burning, I'm done. But that's not actually true failure. So if I'm taking it, being told, stop a few reps shy, we're not only already a few reps shy of failure because we didn't really do failure, but now we add a few more on top of that. What's happening is the intensity is suffering so much. So now we're left with this whole group of people now, this epidemic of people in this zone over here, wallowing in this zone where they're, they're, they think they're doing the right thing by adding more and more volume, but their intensity is not adequate enough to actually create change. That's a problem. If I took this group of people, if I took the next 100 people and I said, do me a favor, if you could do one or the other, either increase your volume or increase your intensity, I would have them increase their intensity and let the volume drop. And I can guarantee you what would happen. Those people that aren't getting results are going to start getting results again. It's not necessarily driven by volume if there's no presence of intensity. Let that, guys, please let that sink in. The intensity is what is key. And there's an epidemic, as I said, of too low of an intensity in people's training these days. And why is this happening again? Because it is too easy to just adopt this than it is to do this. I've used the analogy before when it came to diet and nutrition. Right? and how that plays a part in, in your overall approach to fitness, along with your strength training and weight training. And the deal is, we all can sort of trick ourselves to get to the gym for an hour, a few times a week, four times a week, five times a week. We can do that. But it's the requirement and the commitment that following nutrition takes 23 hours of the day outside of the gym. Of course, you're going to be sleeping. But in those other 23 hours, the commitment is so much larger. The responsibility is so much greater. That is why so many people struggle with nutrition even when they can make the commitment to get to the gym for an hour. So yes, we can do this. Anybody can do this. You go to the gym, spend a few hours. As long as you got time, you can do this. But a lot of us don't have the willpower or the guts or the, the drive to do this. This is hard. This is not. And what you've heard probably the term before, just doing this in the absence of this is junk volume. I actually was just on a podcast with Chris Duffin. We talked exactly about this concept. There's an epidemic now of too much junk volume. Find a way that you can at least exist here, at least exist in the middle. Bring this down a bit, bring this up. But if you had to do anything else, at least err on the side of the intensity. Get the intensity a little bit higher here. Bring that volume a little bit lower. I promise you guys you're going to find better results from doing that. If you found this video helpful, guys, please leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And guys, if you're looking for programs that understand this, we'll never shy away from the intensity. I say it all the time. You can either train hard or you can train long, but you can't do both. All of our programs are available at athletics.com. All right, guys. Be back here again soon in just a couple of days. See you.